What's up, Salty Dogs patrons? You got yo, Jason, yo. Jason and Chris here. Casey is. Oh, I don't know how to even talk about what Casey is right now. So Casey's Casey's got he some, doing? some personal stuff going on in his life right he, now. Yeah, Casey's dealing with life, man. I'll tell you what. And sometimes life is a B. And so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I, th- I thought maybe i'd drop it and then just be like yeah this is how we'll be in our uh in our bonus content but i don't know sometimes yeah. i cuss how much do you cuss how much do i cuss uh probably every day oh yeah you're like that i mean i'm not like just like it's... at your kids and at your wife yeah my kids my wife yeah <laughs> you just, it's all you the just... time you just drop it on them huh? sometimes it's just the best word to describe how you're feeling or what you're trying to say very rarely is it used in anger. It's almost always used in a joking manner. Which... I would say so. Sometimes I use cuss words for for emphasis, but um, I know I'm out of line when I use it like in an argument. And that's always right. that's never a good yeah, that's thing never to like argument. cuss at my wife. So you cuss yeah. at your wife? I, we've oh had, my we, god, we've... Pastor Jason. <laughs> Hey, speaking of titles, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's what we're titles. gonna be. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. So you, uh, you've, you just got home a little while ago from from a meeting. T- yeah, tell me what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, man. So, basically, long story short, I'm a senior pastor now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Se- it, like senior pastor. Senior. Senior, senior yeah, pastor. pastor. Yeah, so the church plant that I'm a part of, um, I've kind of been in an executive pastor kind of role. I mean, without the title, I've kind of been the number two. And uh, our senior pastor, a really good friend of mine, he basically has gotten to a place to where he, the way that he explained it tonight to everybody was that he just feels like he's carried this um, to the point that it needs to be carried to and that it's time to hand it off and that... um, their family, God has something new for their family. They don't know what that is, uh, yet they don't really have any of the steps kind of planned out or what they're going to do or any of that. But they just felt like now's the time to step out of this senior pastor role and, and hand the reins to me. And so in our bylaws, the way that we're structured, um, we don't have to hire like a pastor committee. The way that we structured it was that in the event of the senior pastor having to leave because of moral failure or if he resigned or anything like that, that um, the vice president of the board, which is me, um, automatically becomes the senior pastor. So yeah. that yeah. was the the succession plan. Um, so yeah. for that, I'm kind of thankful because we didn't have to go through all the craziness the, the of craziness yeah of like I, hiring and and i joked about your first act as a sitting pastor was rejecting his resignation right and then, right <laughs> and then rehiring his lead pastor saying nope you're not going anywhere i made that joke he didn't laugh <laughs> oh he did it <laughs> he was oh. like nah, nah i'm out <laughs> but That's it was fun. it's kind of funny so anyway he so today there. so he submitted his resignation last week, and so since last, I don't know, Wednesday, I've been the senior pastor of Living Water Church, um, effective immediately as soon as that resignation comes in. And, yeah, so how uh, many are you guys running? How many are we running? Not enough to <laughs> for anybody to give a crap about what we're doing. <laughs> that's funny. We've um, made that we've made that joke before. Like that's how pastors talk to each other. It's like, oh yeah, you're a pastor. How many of you guys running? Man. The hell Dude, does it's that a, even it's mean? a thing. I hate it. It's the phrase. How many oh, are you yeah. running now? How many are you running? That's and it's so casual, and I just want to be like, how many am I running? I don't. I don't run. I don't go on runs. What are you? Well, what if, are you talking about? Well, if numbers weren't a big deal, there wouldn't be an entire book of the Bible called Numbers, Christopher. Dang. Well, it's biblical then. There you go. <laughs> and then David also got in trouble for counting his men. So there's that too. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. Just tell them that next time. Yeah. So anyway, so. Tonight, I mean, was essentially the night that we let the um, other 15 families, roughly 50 people, let them know, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what happened. And so you guys have 50 people there. Yeah. Ish. I mean, that's including kids. So it's a, it's a good yeah, crew, man. Yeah. We're about a church of 50. Um, I couldn't even tell you the last time we had 50 people at the source. Mm, well, it's been a long time. Man. You're not you're not praying hard enough then. <laughs> Well, maybe, actually, maybe when, was the, last time, my, my when was the last time like you sent out a mailer or oh, boosted a post on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, that's right. where you're really messing up. Okay, <laughs> uh, I got to say this. This is about a little bit of salt. Okay. Say, 
So, so yeah. I was on Instagram the other day, and uh, I was watching this guy who was basically trying to market to pastors, and he says, he says, you know why your church isn't growing? It's because you suck at marketing. And I was like, oh, is that all? He said is that, that all it is? Yeah, yeah. And so he's mm-hmm. his whole pitch was they basically teach pastors how to market so that they can get people in the door. Yeah. Anyways, I know his heart behind it is good, but I'm just like, dude, that's nope. I mean, I, I understand like we're we're making content that's exclusive for patrons and it it's I sometimes have an issue with the whole paid paid situation with like um so I don't know if you know Carrie Newhoff. I'm sure you've yep. read some of his articles. I know who he is. So, yeah, so the other He's day got some he good stuff sometimes. Sometimes yeah, he he posted some article, and uh, it was talking about church growth or whatever it was. I don't know. And uh, I mean, because he's a church growth guy. And so then down at the bottom of his article, it has where you can sign up for church consulting. And it's just like, you know, we'll help you grow your church, this, that, and the other. And, you know, we'll give you the tips and tricks and resources and this, that, and the other. And I just sometimes have a really big problem with that because it's like, look, guy, if you feel like the Lord, like the Holy Spirit in you has given you this understanding, this gifting, right? If you have the fruit of administration and leadership and, you know, you're trying to use that to help others build the church, well, then why are you charging Just give it for, away. for what was, what give is... Give it away, give it away, give it give away. Give it away yeah. now, yeah, right. But then again, on the other hand, like I, I would like to get paid to help churches start media ministries. So get money. Get paid. Get paid. <laughs> all right, I'm out. <laughs> all right, all right. So I have to tell you guys, because that's kind of funny. Uh, what was the name of that just video? Type in, I'm just actually going to look it up right now. This sounds really bad. YouTube, no. Just type in, I'm sorry, patrons. Just type in Black Man Drinks. And Black it should, Man Drinks? Yeah, Black Man and then Drinks. Black Man Refrigerator. It. Oh, yeah, that it's one. Black Did it pop up? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! So so listen to this. Listen to this, people. This is a six minute and forty five or yeah six minute forty five second video. You're not gonna play it right um, now, are you? No, by the by a guy on YouTube, and his name is Mr. Shy City Three. He's got a check mark by his name. Oh uh, yeah, got, the, yeah. It's called keeping your so refrigerator stocked. We'll stocked, get you we'll many, get you many women. women. So ten years ago, Christopher was when this video was posted. It's got 12, 12 million Gosh. views. And it says, man, my homeboy thought I was lying when I said I keep my crib female friendly. So I decided to do a video on how you do it right. (laughs) And he's got, he basically goes through his fridge and shows all the different food he has for different type of girls that come over. So he's like, I got the vitamin water for the fit and the, you know, the fit girls. And that's right. He's like for the ghetto girls, I got the flaming hots, the flaming hot Cheetos. So let me just tell you, it's, it's. Totally inappropriate, but it's freaking hilarious. He's got the popsicles. <laughs> for the, That's the best part for the kids for the, that for come the, over. Yeah, well, yeah, for the women that have kids. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Just, and he's got he's got the Xbox and the Comcast. Xbox and the PS4. You ain't used to having options. They ain't used to having options. Anyways, yeah, we got on one. So, uh, you gotta, you how guys did gotta we, watch that video? I don't even Mr. know Shai how they... three. Yeah, well, holler, holler at your boy. Yeah, that's right. What'd you say? Get money and, and get paid. You can paid. also bend black man refrigerator. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Funny Anyways, stuff. we need to, so, so. So, so yeah, you, you were just talking about the guy on Instagram that was marketing to you. Yeah, some of that stuff drives me crazy, man. And I actually, I'm a jerk, but if I get served an ad on Facebook, that's one of these church marketing, like pay us money and we'll help you grow to 200 and break the barrier. I always uh, report the ad as offensive. Oh. <laughs> I do. Oh God, but I Jason, do. you know the gospel is offensive, right? So, no, oh my, but they're they're not. Yeah, the good news is you Gosh. give me money and then we'll grow your church. That's not the gospel. I I get it. I get it. You know, been there, I, done that. Yeah, I mean, didn't okay. work. Well, here's the crazy. Th- okay, honestly, here's the crazy thing, man, is that. You know, there's a there's a buddy that we have that's planning a church on the west side, a guy that we we would both know. I'm not going to drop his name, but he he had his denomination back him with some big bucks. He did the he did the strategic church planning things. He did everything in the check boxes that you're supposed to do. He launched um, and and it didn't blow up. I think they have like 20 people and they, that's, I don't think they've really, they didn't break a hundred. They didn't do any of that. And because of that, you know, they faced several setbacks. Anyways, he was at, uh, we, we have a, a, 
a church kind of pastors get together once a month where we all, a bunch of pastors go out to lunch. And so he was there and we were kind of asking him some questions and he was just explaining more setbacks that they've hit. They got a building and then it flooded and then they have all this money. So anyways, there's just all this stuff going on. And he, and he said, he's got a buddy that's been talking to him and like, you know, dude, at what point do you throw in the towel? And my heart hurts for him because dude, church planning isn't easy, man. You you put your family on the line. You 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 try to do something what you believe God is leading you to do, and then for something to not grow after you've worked a system, you know, you can't help but ask yourself, is there something wrong with me? Did I do this wrong? When really, and so I had a conversation with him afterwards, and I was like, dude, don't throw in the towel, man. Maybe it's not that. You know, maybe it's 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 the wrong wine skin. You're using an old wine skin and you're trying to put new wine in it. Maybe you need a different wine skin, because there are so many pastors that are church planners that are experiencing the same thing. They start out with good intentions, they do what they feel God is leading them to do, but they go to the old wine skin of like regular church planning. When I really do believe we're on the verge of of something new, um, missional communities, that type of thing. You know, churches that are moving away from the heavy emphasis on it's all about Sunday, but actually yeah. trying to equip people and all that stuff. So, I mean, it, it's out there, man. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have a conversation off here. I would like to know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. I'll, I'll let but, you know. But yeah, it's, it can be, it can be crazy, man. People do put their lives on the line and this just kind of goes back to what we we're talking about. So your lead pastor resigned. I mean, he, how long have you guys been a church Two and a half. It, it, we're coming up on two and a half years. We're just shy of two and a half years. And okay. uh, and I mean, at one point we probably had eighty something people involved. And you know now oh, we're really? down to about yeah. Now, now we're down to about fifty. Um, but we've maintained, and it's probably been about fifty people for a year and a half, which is crazy. We've had yeah. crazy. I mean, very much like the source. You guys have your committed core. I mean, we have that. Right. Right. And uh, and it was crazy tonight, man. You know. Um, the the previous pastor, my my really good friend, buddy, honestly, somebody who's impacted my life in a huge way, he got up and just shared. He was very honest, vulnerable, and just shared, like, you know, we just feel like um, God is calling us out of this. And honestly, if anything, we've held on to it too long, and it's hard to let, you know, this go. But we really believe that Chris is the person. And, and he actually told me, this was a long time ago, this was like within our first year, that God told him that he would give living water he would pass it over to me one day. Yeah. Um, and this was early, early on. I mean, this is probably like four or five months within us actually. And so he's, he said, God told him that. Yes. Very, like really. Yeah. So he did, was like, there are so did he few... bring, did he bring that up at any point during this transition and say, well, you know, God told me that you were going to take over anyway. So here we are. Uh, he he did, but it wasn't like he brought it up. But it was kind of one of those things that like I've because he's never told anyone that he's like he he brought it up in a way that was more like I really feel like this was God's plan from the start, you know. So I mean, I do find it interesting you, that maybe he wouldn't like tell that to people. Also, well, I think he he's real weird on telling people God said this too. Like he doesn't want it to be seen as a Jesus juke, which I get. Interesting. So, but anyways, yeah, so we did that. And then, I mean, basically we, so he, he talked about that, talked for probably about 15 minutes. They, uh, I went up and I just talked, I just affirmed him with my words and just thanked him for everything he's done. And we all gathered as a body and laid hands on him and we all prayed over their family for about 10 minutes and, and it was really good. And, and then, uh, we had the gospel goodbye, you know, we're the, we don't know what they're stepping into, but God's calling them into something else. And so we, uh, we prayed over them and, and then we had a brief intermission. Everybody got coffee, said their goodbyes, hugged him. And then they left. We, uh, we actually asked him, I told him that we, as a board, had decided it would probably be best if they left after that. And then so that we could get down to like, okay, everyone's big question is going to be what now? What does this look like? So so how did you answer that question? What now? <laughs> so our our previous senior pastor was extremely gifted in in a uh, kind of visionary, big picture, futuristic structure systems. Like he is built like nobody else when it comes to that stuff. And honestly, he, he structured us in a way to where on it. If we were a thousand person church, we could operate because of the structures and systems that we, he built and put in place. Now, granted, we would need those people. There's all, but he built the system. It's just his mind. It's how he operates. And so, um, one of the big things that I told people was that, you know, 
we have this nice big bulky system, but there's also a lot of pressure that comes with that, a lot of pressure to multiply and reproduce and all this kind of things and, and grow. And so w- that's not bad. We still want to do that one day and we believe that's going to happen. But we're, if you use the analogy of a car, we're just going to take that, that imagine the organizational, extremely structured side of Living Water Church as a car. And we're going to take that and park it in the garage and we'll come back to it one day whenever God is, you know, whenever growth happens and if and when it happens, then we'll go, we'll go pick that stuff up and pray, all right, God, is this still the same thing? Um, but I basically talked about the three, a foundation, like a, a big part of, of a lot of people's frustration too was just how much change we had always happening. It's like we would make a change, we'd sit in it for a month, and if there was no results, it would get changed again. Um, so there was a lot of frustration that people had because of that. And just confusion, more confusion than anything else. And it's hard to get excited about the next big thing when there's been 20 big things. So Right. So that that's really interesting because I feel like the source when we started the source. So for those of you who are listening and you don't have our backstory, my my backstory as a lead pastor, I moved from Houston to Wichita to be a lead pastor or campus pastor, uh, church planner, whatever of an existing church. So we were campus multi-site, that whole situation. And um Oh, what am I trying to say now? Oh, okay. So anyways, yeah, we, we shut that down after four years and we started the source Wichita and, uh, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, I mean, we knew that we need to get people together, but we basically did what we knew to do, which is what you guys did. You started a church, right? You like got a logo, mission, vision, values, uh, built a website, um, started social media channels and you started saying, Hey, we're a church come to our service. Right. So like we, we, we launched a service really, uh, with people who were already kind of in, in relationship, friendship and spiritual family. Um, but you know, we did that for like a year and then we were like, well, we don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? Where's this going? What's this going to look like? And we're doing Sunday nights and it's like, well, do we want to move to Sunday morning and, and all this stuff. And God was doing a bunch of stuff with us. But then we ended up <clears throat> moving um, to another building and then calling ourselves a ministry, not a church, which is confusing for a lot of people. And and at that point in time, I took off the title pastor and called myself teacher and leader. So that was confusing to a lot of people. Um, yeah. But anyways, it was like we started uh, Aviator North and then we went and moved to become Aviator Delano. And then we shut all that down and went back to Aviator Derby and asked people to come to that. Well, you know, there was like two people who said, okay, we'll drive to Derby from Wichita. Um, <laughs> and then we started the source and then we were at a one building and then we came to another building and then we were doing Sunday nights and then we were doing Sunday mornings. Now we're doing Friday nights. So that's all like since 2015, basically. It was December 2014, January 2015. So technically at the beginning of this year, we turned four years old, right. um, which is kind of crazy to think about. But for those four years, we've we've done quite a bit. Um, and so anyways, just there's there's a lot of moving around and we re- really didn't know where we we're going or what we were doing. We just knew that we wanted to do what God was telling us to do. We're kind of trying to figure that out. And we're still meeting and doing the whole church thing. Like, yeah, let's have worship and let's have group and let's eat lunch and let's, you know, let me preach and teach and do that kind of stuff. And so right. all along the way, we've been making all these shifts and we've lost a lot of people along the way. Um, and so you guys are kind of in that situation now to where it's like, you started this thing. Now you don't know. And then uh, you like, I mean, you guys have done a lot of stuff. You started with groups, but then you started a gathering, and then you were doing firesides, and then then you're doing Sunday night gathering. I mean, just you guys have been all over the place. Yeah, we've too. had so, we've had a whole lot of change. So, what do you think it is that, like, it, is that a turnoff to people? Like, hey, we're doing this thing, but we really don't know what we're doing. Like, what's the the qualm with with being part of something that's just kind of moving and shifting all the time? I think, I think, I I think actually, I actually think people are pretty okay with where we're at now. We basically admitted like tonight, I I said, you know, we're going to go on a journey to build this, you know, essentially we've been trying to live missionally. Well, what the hell does that mean? Like, who knows what it means to live missionally? That sounds really cool. That sounds really good. But what does that mean? Um, What does it mean to make disciples? We 
kind of know what that means, but what does that really mean? And, um, and so we basically said that like the three, I'm, I'm going, I'm not answering your question, but I will get there. So just sure. No, that's totally fine. Yep. I talked about like, essentially we're not going to be making any big changes. All we're going to do is like the foundation of, of who we are is still saying the same thing. So if you imagine blocks, like we have these three rectangle blocks as our foundation living missionally, um, in our everyday, like in the everyday moments of our lives, making disciples and living an authentic community. Like those are the three things that are the most important to us as a church. Evangelism falls into disciple making. There's all, I mean, there's a place for everything. It fits in those categories. So what we've said is like, we're, I don't want people to view things that we add on as changing, but add like view those three things as the foundation. We're going to be adding blocks as we go along you know, onto those three things. I think where people, the qualms that people have with something that's constantly changing is when you make, when you make certainty statements, like this is the thing, this is what we're supposed to do. And then we try it, we do it for a month and then we change it again and go, Oh, that wasn't the thing. Because when you do that four, five, six, ten 10 times in two years, like that wears people out and it's hard for them to get excited about the next thing that you say, because right. you know, things keep changing. And so, um, so I, I think now what we basically told people is like, hey, this summer, our leadership, like not our leadership team, our board, our elders, if you will, the, the people who are leading, um, which is me, uh, two women and another man. And we're going to be adding another woman to that. Um, so two men, three women, we are taking the summer to pray through and ask God for some clarity on some things. And we mapped out what our summer is going to look like and filled in some gaps. Uh, we got some pretty cool things we're going on. I'm really excited. Uh, we came up with the idea to, to have family nights, Easter uh, egg one, hunts every month, family. Yeah. Easter egg hunts every Sunday, helicopter <laughs> drops once a month. Do you think about how much you guys will grow? Except during the summer, we're going to drop hot dogs from helicopters. <laughs> Why are people only doing one egg hunt per year? Why is this it raining is... wieners from the sky? <laughs> doing a wiener drop. <laughs> Yo, it's going to be the biggest wiener drop in all of Wichita. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh! Hold your I buns just, up, kids. Catch I just, one. I just need. I just need to know if they're kosher or not. Cause, oh, that's freaking terrible. These aren't even all beef. <laughs> yeah. Monthly wiener Anyway, drops. so so we. Uh, that's gross. So strategy. the most excited, the most excited that I'm about about something that we're adding into the mix is what I'm just calling family nights. But it's essentially an equipping night to where we're gonna we're gonna have fun things for the kids to do and to be in community with one another. And while the kids are doing that, uh, the adults are gonna be inside and I'm going to begin to equip parents to lead, uh, to begin thinking about how they can lead their family spiritually. Um, because we don't have a gathering every week. Like there's no kids ministry. So that's something that's lacking. So finding creative ways to like, okay, Parents, obviously, we all know, spend more time with their kids than anyone else. So let's just equip our parents to be able to leave their kids. And so trying to fill in some of those gaps. And so we got a good plan going into the summer um, to try to fill in some of those gaps of, of some things that we're missing. But, I mean, it the most important thing that we still do is is getting together on Sundays for our simple churches and, and uh, firesides, table sides, those things where we're having those deep conversations, iron sharp and iron type deals. So... Um, I think us simply admitting, hey, go with us on this journey. We don't have it figured out. We're going to God and stick around, you know, and pray about sticking around. And so um, there wasn't anyone that I talked to that was going to be dipping out. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works. But I think just being honest and like, you know, we've tried a lot of things. We're going to see what God does. Um, we'll just be honest. We don't have the answers, but he does. So, you know, what this this reminds uh, I want to ask you the question about like, do you think people's perception or expectation of you is going to change based on you now becoming the lead pastor of Living Water? I, w- I want to get to that, but um, yeah, go ahead. Answer that. I, I forgot my second question. Man, you know, I had that thought. Um, I hope not. Actually, I told Lara tonight, I admitted, I was like, you know, I'm I'm actually kind of insecure that people may think that I'm not serious enough you know to be a senior pastor you know i joke around quite a bit and even throughout our little meeting like i joked around and i hope no one treats me differently i am leaning more towards that they won't um at least the people that are around now because 
I mean, honestly, man, for the last you know year and a half, I've shepherd, I've become the primary one of the primary shepherds in our context that has provided the most care for people. And I don't say that to brag. I mean, as much as I say that to just that's there was a need, and I didn't think I was a shepherd, but I care about people, and so I think that I mean, caring about these people hopefully will not have them see me any differently because I think that people treat pastors differently when they don't know them and they put these expectations on them like, Oh, you got, you you know, they're going to be this certain way or they're going to act this certain way or they can't say these certain things. Well, I'll make a penis joke all day long. Like I'll, you know, I'll sit outside around a fire and drink beers with guys like, and And talk about wieners dropping from helicopters and kids holding their buns up for them. (laughs) We receive the wiener. (laughs) Oh my gosh! I think I just yelled into the mic too. Holy crap! Did so it dis- is it distorting when I'm laughing? No, it's not. Oh, okay, good. So uh, I man, to answer your question, I I hope not. I really hope not. Yeah. Well, so here's what I was gonna say. Like, you know, you talked about taking the organizational piece as though it's a vehicle. It's been built. It exists. It works. But let's just put it in the garage for a little while, and if we need to come back to, it, we can come back to it. Um, because what takes place in the vehicle can actually, I mean, granted, you're not moving from point A to point B in a quicker fashion, but honestly, the best thing that happens in car rides, if you're with other people is relationship, right? Like, um, right. You know, going on road trips, that kind of thing. And that's, that's what it's all about. And so I, I I was thinking about this and I, I typed it out so that I can, um, read it properly. So I, it just made me think about longevity and ministry. So what you're, what you guys are talking about right now is not like, how do we build this organization and help it to exist over a lifetime? Um, how can we, it, I think you're asking a question, how do we exist as a spiritual family and community over our lifetime? So let me read the statement. Um, rather than making an organization exist over a lifetime, you're trying to exist as a spiritual family in community over your lifetime. So you're not saying, okay, how do we get living water to live and exist as a church entity and, you know, for like the rest of my life, you know what I mean? Like right. you, it essentially you've taken on this organization. So like if I were to go in and take over a company as a president, like I would be going in thinking about how I can continue that company to be profitable and to exist as long as I possibly can year after year after year until somebody else comes in and takes it to the next level. Um, but think about how much pressure there is on that versus what if you are just existing as a believer in Christ in community with other people and you're growing closer, closer to the Lord, you're trying to be missional. You're trying to figure out what are we doing? Where are we going? But all the while you're knowing him and he's knowing you and you guys are one another and one another if you're not building the organizational part, but you're building each other up, I don't think you're missing the boat by any means. I don't think you're missing anything. Right, right. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Man. And I think and... one carries one carries a ton of pressure, and then the other one is just, let me just exist in life, and if there are other people around me that we can intentionally get together and like do this together, well, then why not do that? Why does it have to be this, grow this thing and make this thing exist and you know, be a thing? Yeah. And and you know, the crazy thing too, is that you brought up a business and I really do think that that's why I'm able to step into this, um, into this with no pressure and no, and that's because I'm not getting paid. There's no money involved. There's no pressure for me to keep the tithing up so that I can collect a paycheck. There's none of that. Honestly, I don't care if any money ever comes in again. Like there's no, and and because of that, like say what you will, but there's a sense of desperation. I mean, I talked to another church planner the other day. He was telling me like, you know, dude, I agree with everything that you're saying, but, but what does that mean for me? Like I, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta get paid. You know, I gotta, I gotta do this. If this doesn't work out, then what are we going to do? We, you know, and, and for our family, now I understand with these guys, because these guys, at least this dude had, he admitted, he's like, you know, I don't really have the kind of skills that, you know, he, they don't have the kind of skills that you and I have like these tent making things where you do graphic design and things like that. And, and I do little bit of graphic work, but mostly photography, like that's my, that's my thing. And so being able to, to provide for my family that way has really taken off all the pressure. And, um, you know, I hope that, I hope that talk about pay never really comes up. Um, for me, I think that if they ever wanted to do something, 
um, what I would probably say, like the board, I'd say, hey, well, why don't you guys just pray? And if you want to bless me with a one-time thing, then you guys can go ahead and do that. But I don't know that I want to take on this this weekly or this well, monthly pay type deal. At it least just not, adds pressure and expectation. I, I was going to say, at least not something that you become dependent upon. Right, right. right? But if it's a blessing, like if, if the board says, hey, we're going to bless Chris's family with a thousand bucks a month because we can afford it and we appreciate him shepherding and leading and guiding and teaching and, and, you know, doing this for the body, like let's bless him. But, you know, if at any point you feel like you have to perform or produce numbers or, you know, we got it, we got to preach on, on tithing because it's, you know, I don't know hey, if we're going to be able to, we need to, we need to do an episode on tithing. We need to talk about that. That'll be a fun one. It'll be really good. It'll I have really the fun. one, two, three life school podcast we can use to prep because those guys hit it and they hit it on the head, man. Yeah. They right. nail it. Honestly, we can just take that and play it on our feed and we will be good. <laughs> and just say, yes, this, everything they say. I'd actually like to get Caesar on a freaking podcast. That's like more than 30 minutes long and see how he exists after that. Cause they keep their, <laughs> they keep their apart. stuff short and it just drives me nuts. Well, some I'm people like, you like guys that. get, Get in the freaking meat, man. Come on now. Some people, no, yeah, they, they just get to the meat and there's no. Some people there's, like. There's no, some people there's like no foreplay. Footlong. They just get right to some it. Some people like footlongs and some people like Viennas. Is, so, I mean, it just all depends on oh your taste gosh. for, for we wiener chops. a wiener kick today, man. Good <laughs> Lord. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry. You should sorry. call this the wiener bonus know. episode or something like that. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. We, I think sometimes we forget that there are women listening to our our Patreon account. Uh, so actually, speaking of patrons, Ellen Rose just how many joined. we running? How many we running? <laughs> how many we running? Oh my gosh, we've got uh, we've got nine patrons. Which Heck yeah, hey, you know what? Here's the thing. Like, uh, it it's... two or more, baby, two or more. Good enough for Jesus. Good enough. For... <laughs> Here's the thing, and I, I just feel like I always need to say this about the Patreon account. It's kind of like, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's like what podcasters do, and so it's like, hey, if you want to support the podcast, and you know, it, money makes the world go round. I guess I don't know. We've been able to upgrade a ton of our equipment, um, actually, by having patrons, and our some of our Patreon resources have gone to purchasing equipment so that we can actually do these bonus episodes from home and not have to be in the studio. Right. And so that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. And so anyways, uh, yeah. So we're grateful for our patrons and, and who is that? Pe- people is have that just, just joined, uh, Ellen, her name's Ellen Rose. Ellen she actually, Rose. she reviewed. Thank yeah. Thanks Ellen. She reviewed the podcast on Facebook and then a couple of weeks later she joined on Patreon. And so we appreciate that. And you know, it's like, here's the thing. Like we, we want to make it beneficial to people. I don't, I don't want to get into the habit of like, or get into the mindset of like, Oh, Hey, we got to create content so that we can get more patrons. It's people have decided to support us financially on Patreon. And so we want to make it worth their while. Right. Yeah, and so, exactly. So that's what we're doing. And so, yeah, definitely bonus content anytime we can and early release audio and that kind of stuff. The whole early release thing is kind of interesting right now because now we do Facebook lives. And so that the content gets out there right away, but not everybody's on Facebook. Not everybody watches yeah. the videos, not everybody, you know, some people like the audio feed. And so we can take like typically our audio will release on a now on a Sunday night. So people can get it Monday morning, but let's say we record like on a Wednesday night, um, well then, you know, the next day I'm probably going to post the audio, the, the raw uncut audio, you know, to Patreon so people can have access to that audio if they need it. And so anyways, I, I just, yeah. So just to reiterate some of the benefits of people on Patreon, but are we done? What do you, what do you think about the statement? Hold on. The problem yeah, isn't, I'm on Facebook. I was looking. The problem isn't God, God's not hearing our prayers it's us not listening for god's response yeah who said that i saw it uh we know them i'm not i'm not gonna name drop first name only first name only last name greatest (laughs) something like that ever first name greatest last name ever is brooke oh okay um so what do I think of the statement? Yeah, I just was wondering. The do you problem agree? Do you not agree? The problem isn't God not hearing our prayers. It's us not listening for God's prayers. Well, first of all, I don't I don't know why anybody would – well, maybe I do. 
why would people think that God doesn't hear their prayers? I mean, that sounds like religion through and through. Well, some people, I think, who have been hurt by, like, God didn't answer my prayers. Yeah. God really heard my prayer about my baby, you know, not getting really sick or something like that. Then Yeah. Well, so let's let's break that down. So get rid of, isn't God not hearing our prayers? So the pro- the statement should then read, the problem is us not listening for God's response. Right. I mean, I, I, sure. I mean, I think we all can get into a situation to where we're not listening to God. I also think there's not a lot of teaching on listening. And it, I, it, I think it's too ambiguous, man. Like when you start telling people, listen to the spirit, you're opening up all sorts of cans of worms for people to hear things. And, and I'm not saying from a bad perspective, like you can't control that. Yeah. That's the, that's the problem is there's no control behind it. And that's what happens. We're about to go down a whole rabbit trail. But anyways, I was just going to say like, that's the problem is that you can't control it. And so when pastors have a hard time teaching stuff, when you can't control it, dude, that's crazy. That's the other thing too. Like I'm stepping into this pastoral role when I've questioning more than I've ever questioned in my faith, you know, and it's super interesting, but I, um, you know, trying to stay close to Jesus and just listen, I, I just kind of take on his guidance. A lot of that has to do with the role, not the role of the Bible in our life. I know we're going to talk about this in a, an upcoming episode about the Bible and stuff, but I think the phrasing is what is the priority? Like what priority does the Bible have in the life of a believer? I think that's probably hmm. it instead of the role. We know the role, just where does it come in as far well, as priority? Some, I, I think some people don't know the role. Yeah, maybe. I, don't I know. mean, because I could ask the question to people. We've talked about this, but I could say, hey, what does the Bible tell you it's good for for you? Like, tell, find me the verse where the Bible tells you what it's good for for you. Rebuking, I mean, there, there's a couple. Building up, yeah. training, righteousness. Uh, blah, blah, yeah, blah, right. Something. Well, there's more. Jesus talks about Scripture. What no, does Jesus it. say about Scripture? That's it. Yeah. Just that one. No, just the one. <laughs> G. Jesus, Jesus says this, you know, the scriptures point to me. And so anyways, that's, I, I think there's a, just a couple of statements of what the role of the scripture is in the life of the believer. Um, and then people start saying, well, it talks about the word of God is living and active and this, that, and the other. Well, the, that when the scripture, when the scripture says the word of God, it never means itself. Hmm. It do, it just doesn't. I mean, there. Larry and I got. I wish we could have had something recording. We talked. We had a huge long. You know, our mutual friend of ours who posted that very controversial statement about the Bible. Yes. Okay, uh-huh. so we, I read that out loud to her, and so we had a huge talk about it on the way down to Houston. I was like, dang, I really wish we were recording right now, just because people, dude, they place so much. I mean, the power, the power in the Bible is not, is not. Most of the power. I want to be careful how I phrase this. Most of the power, I think, doesn't come from necessarily what's written, but what God brings to it now, currently. So it's not necessarily what was written in the past, but I think it's what God is speaking to us now in our present while we read the words of the past. Now, that's not to say that somebody can't read the words of Jesus and have their life impacted by it, by it but most people are saying, oh, I read this and God revealed this to me. I mean— Early, I think, all on in your faith, maybe it's taking it at face value exactly for what it says. But as you begin to pro- progress in your Christian faith, it becomes more of what is God saying to me now. And it's less about, honestly, what the Bible is saying and more about what Jesus is saying into you in that moment. It's almost like it's just a lightning rod and a yeah. conduit to help you right. hear the word. But, but then you get into the whole conversation of, can Jesus say can things to heretic. me that aren't—what? What did you say? I said, you can call me a heretic. Oh no! I was saying, but the I think one of the problems is that um, then people will say, "Well, he can only speak to you what is already written," as though like all of God's words that He will ever speak throughout eternity have been contained inside of a book, and then He's only reading from those pages when He talks to you. What was that so, quote that you said that one time in a in a book that speaks of an all powerful God? Something. Of the God is contained. He can't like act outside of the book. You said something. Oh, like that. Like, the, yeah the the very the very book that speaks of an uncontainable God is the very book we use to contain our God. Dang. Tweet that. <laughs> tweet that. Tweet it. Tweet it like a mofo. Hashtag heretic. All right, it's late. It's twelve thirty a.m. It is late. Oh, it's twelve twenty-four a.m. Are we calling it? I'm good, man. 
that's cool. Yeah, that's well, a these, forty-five minute, forty-three minute episode. These, Heck yeah, that's good. These these are the bonus episodes, my friend. So if you guys, how often are we going to start trying to do these? I don't know. At least once a month. I mean, we did one last month. It's May now. It's almost over, so we'll push this out for May, and uh, I think at least try for once a month, and then if we can, we'll get to two a month, and Heck we'll yeah. see. We'll we'll just keep Casey in our prayers, and hopefully he can get on these with us soon. And not really sure where that's going to be, but we are going to let him heal and do whatever he needs to do spiritually for, you know, himself and his family and, and those around him who love him. So, yep. All right, you guys, thanks so much for being our page patrons and checking out salty dogs podcast as always. Have a good night, Chris. Have your bun, hold your buns high. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs>